Uh, this is like my third attempt recording this because I keep giving away parts of the book that I don't want to give away so you can enjoy it on your own and this could be as not a spoiler as I can possibly make it. So we're going to start from scratch. Uh, the book I promised you to I promised you that I would review today is Charlene Harris's Dead as a Doornail. It's the fifth book in her Stackhouse series. Um, let's see. We'll start off with a summary, of course, and then the five-star rating. And after the book review, there will be a small update. And, well, let's, let's start, you know, the first item. The summary. Dead as a Doornail has a lot of events occurring at once that are interconnected and at the same time independent of themselves. The first main I guess plot point is that shapeshifters are being shot left and right all across Louisiana and in some other states and the question is why and who's doing it and of course because they're being shot and they're considered homicides the police are involved but obviously the police aren't going to be able to make the connection between the individuals who are all being shot execution style meaning you know one bullet usually through the heart the chest cavity or through the head these individuals are being shot and the end of, you know the the police don't know about the shapeshifters we just learned about them in the third book well, how can we expect them to know about it I mean they're they're dealing with vampires I think vampires are doing it so that's going on you have shapeshifters that are being shot and related to that one of the sh one of the shot shifters is um, Calvin Norris so you know we were introduced to him several books ago and this isn't exactly a spoiler because it is written on the back of the summary. So anyone who picks up the book is already aware of this, that Jason becomes a, were a werewolf, no, a werepanther, werepanther, um, because of the events that happened at Hot Shots. Anyway, Calvin is the leader of Hot Shots, so Jason's a newcomer, and a lot of people are thinking, did Jason do this? Crystal, who is um, Nora's daughter, she kind of she's kind of investigating Jason I mean she doesn't think he did any of it obviously she loves him and Sookie doesn't think Jason did it Jason knows he didn't do it I mean he he's not the smartest person out there he thinks well maybe I did and I just don't know I did so that that's going on too is Jason uh, is being I guess the center of attention because of the cops you know focused on him in several books before and now you know his own community is focusing on him too so Sookie is not only worried about the shifters being shot, but also Jason being pegged as the gunman. Another little side story that's occurring is Merlot needs a bartender, a new bartender, for a short period of time. The reasons why you will find out when you read it, when you read the book. So they borrow one from Fantasia. His name is Charles. He's chivalrous, he's nice, and he's seemingly sweet for the most part. He ends up having to stay with Sookie and part of for part of this book and for the other part uh, for reasons you again you will find out when you read it he ends up staying with Bill so that's another little plot that's going on um, one of the main things that the book ends with or comes close to ending with is the leader of the uh, werewolves in Jacksonville and you remember part of those individuals include uh, Hel uh, Alcide and his father while well, their leader was killed in a car crash and when a werewolf dies, the pack master dies, another individual has to take his place. So you kind of elect yourself and whatnot. Well, Alcide asked Sookie to go to the funeral because she knew the pack master, as you're aware from the other books. And um, she goes on his arm, dresses nicely, and apparently she's not there as a mourner. She's there as a political symbol saying that she supports Alcide's father, which she didn't agree to, and um, I guess the whole issue there is when you interact with Alcide in this book, you kind of grow to despise him, at least I did, and a lot of it's because he's pulling Sookie into something that she doesn't need to be a part of, so that's going down, and uh, yeah, Sookie becomes targeted and she becomes involved in all of these little stories. Which sucks for her because her New Year's resolution was not to end up in the hospital again, and as you'll find out, she does. You get to decide how, though, because I'm not going to 
No, excuse me, I'm not going to tell you. Anyway, um, that's like a summary of the book. I'm not going to fill in the endings for you, but those are the thing, main things that are occurring. Um, let's just say in the end, it, it, it's sad. Part of it is sad. Part of it, you're just like, thank God, that's resolved. Things resolve themselves in various ways. And some of it's unfair. Um, my opinion of the book. Like I said, this is probably the least favorite uh, of the series for me. And that's because, well, it's, it's, it's a thin line. The thing is, the writer, um, Char Charlene Harris, she wrote this book so you would feel like you were actually with the character, that you're in Sookie's mind or you're watching Sookie do these things, which is good because it gives you that beneficial you know, perspective, that, that point of view that we don't always get from books, which is nice, except when individ when things go down, like when things that you know are significant happen, they happen instantly. And you don't really have a good perspective of it unless you go back and reread it. And I'm the type of person who doesn't like having to reread things. That's because I I'm a slow reader to begin with. And in school, I've always had to go back and reread and go back and reread to understand certain things because I would my brain would just mess up you know, the, the wording. Or I would change the wording to make sense in my head, even though it makes sense on paper. So I always, ha always had to go back and reread, especially when I read out loud. And I don't want to do that with a pleasure reading book. I should be reading it because I'm enjoying reading it. And it aggravated me that I had to keep going back to figure out what happened in those quick seconds. The, the author writes it so it flows with the pace of the actual events, which is cool, except, you know, when someone gets shot or if you know, someone gets stabbed, it doesn't happen, but, you know, you want to follow it up with a suspense, but it just, it happens too quickly. And you're just kind of going like, what? You have to go back and relook at things, and that's just annoying. At least I think that's annoying. So, uh, out of five, I give this book like three stars. Um, three and a half, I'll be generous, three and a half. Uh, it's, it's, it's a decent book, it's a good, it, there are a lot of shocks in it, so if you like that, this is definitely the book for you. Um, one of the reviews says, plot twists and fascinating characters abound, which is true, that's from Lib Library Journal. Um, this one says, natural and humorous dialogue and a nicely paced plot helps make this the best entry yet in the series, that's from Publishers Weekly, and I have to disagree. The plot is not paced nicely. It's way too quick, and parts are way too slow. And you're just like, "Come on, get over, get it over with." Or, "Oh, why do you have to go so quickly on that aspect?" And I don't know. Like I said, least favorite of the series. Uh, the next book, though, is definitely dead. I think. Yeah, definitely dead. I haven't read it yet, but I, I will. So, that'll come eventually. Next Friday, you can expect Genius Squad. I will do a review on that one. That book, I like that book. There's a little, you know, a preview. <laughs> I really did enjoy Genius Squad. So that's coming next week. Now, aside from the book review, time to, like, I, I'm going to give you a little update. Today, I have a doctor's appointment at 3.15. It's almost 11. Um, I'm actually pretty scared about this doctor's appointment because I don't know if I mentioned this in previous videos, but I had an abdominal ultrasound which uh, I had scheduled because I had elevated liver enzymes in one of my blood tests. Um, so you know, I'm not really a drinker. I just turned 21, I just started drinking, and I'm not... I mean, I've had this elevated liver enzyme thing since I was like 19, 20 years, 20, 20 years old, last year actually. And I'm finally taking care of it. Uh, I went on a little bit of a self-destructive path, which it, it happens. So, that having been said, I, I have that... Uh, result the results of the abdominal ultrasound today so depending on those I might have to do a liver biopsy so if the book review is late you'll have to forgive me next week it, it just really depends on what's going on I will post an update this weekend or at the beginning of next week to let you know how my ultrasound thing came out or someone will be posting it for me because if, if it's bad I, I don't know if I'll be able to say it I'm the type of person who runs away most of the time Anyway, um, this is hitting 10 minutes. I apologize for the length, and I will see you guys next week. So, ciao, and pick up the book.